Continuing our Vikings position group preview. Ah, the wide receivers. Why do birds suddenly appear every time we talk about Justin Franklin Jefferson? For my mind, the best wide receiver in the game. Uh, the only receiver to have 3K yards receiving in his first two seasons. He is dynamic. He is explosive. He is a fun-loving, team-first dude, and he's just fantastic man also this is the last year he's gonna be cheap since he's eligible for an extension uh, next off season so give him all the money I, I don't care how much Aaron Donald just get 30 million don't care pay it pay it pay it so a, a true blue alpha dog wide receiver one and uh, we've talked about ad nauseum we saw what Kevin O'Connell and Wes Phillips and that Rams offense did for Cooper Cup a wide receiver one who you knew was getting the ball was still getting uh, cornerback one attention and he still got the ball they're going to do that with Jefferson they're going to do that with Thielen and everything is going to be beautiful and perfect in the Vikings passing game and Adam Thielen Adam Thielen's got a bit of a chip on his shoulder again because I think people have forgotten how good Adam Thielen is. The pride of Detroit Lakes, Mankato State University Community College alum. I think that he, you know, coming back from that ankle injury where you know two of his past three seasons have been marred by injury, he needs to prove that, hey, he is still that guy. Even though he's getting up there in age, uh, he, him and Kirk Cousins obviously have a rapport, especially in the red zone. Uh, Adam Thielen is just a, he's just a threat, man. And I, I think that Thielen is actually in line for one of his best seasons uh, ever because the Vikings passing game is going to be opened up and Jefferson is going to be drawing cornerback one as well as safety attention every single damn play. So Thielen is going to be matched up against cornerback twos, cornerback threes, and getting ISO'd one-on-one. Bring it. Bring it, man. Uh, also, wide receiver three. So you got K.J. Osborne in there where he was a fifth-round pick in 2020. He didn't really pan out as a rookie. Uh, played sparingly on offense as well as bench was benched thrice as punt returner. And then he came into year two, and he had a damn fine season. I think that you can make a case that K.J. was the most improved Viking last year. I, I think you would say K.J. Osborne, Armand for Watts. Certainly. And KJ, I think, has a golden opportunity to step up uh, in year three and just be that wide receiver three because there's going to be a lot of balls flying around. Like, there's going to be uh, plenty to eat uh, in terms of receptions on the Vikings passing game buffet. And I think. KJ, as of right now, as of right now, he's splitting time with BC Johnson. You know, we'll, we'll talk about in a sec. Uh, I think that uh, KJ does have a chance to be the dynamic wide receiver three playmaker. I think that he can play from the slot. He can play from the outside. Uh, he can do a lot of things. ISM. So, I got high hopes for Amir Smith Marset, but. He's on, in a walking boot currently. Kevin O'Connell is hopeful that he'll be back for training camp, but he does have that long speed uh, that you would love to see uh, as part of this offense. Didn't really do much as a rookie. Uh, came on later on in the season. Had, had two had two big games against the Bears, especially uh, that Week 18 game. Uh, so ISM, the pride of Iowa, it, it's in a bit of a holding pattern right now because I think if he's healthy, uh, he could have the inside track to secure the punt return job as well as get some wide receiver four uh, type work. So now BC Johnson, Another veteran, former seventh round pick. Now, he's a guy who showed a lot as a rookie, uh, but then last year tore his ACL. He would have been a factor. Uh, if BC doesn't tear his ACL, does he secure the wide receiver three job? And does KJ's uh, opportunity last year evaporate? Who really knows? But BC Johnson is a talented dude. He will play special teams. He is a selfless player. Now, will he ever be a wide receiver one or two? Probably not, but could he contribute as a wide receiver 3-4? Yes, absolutely. So it is good to have him back in the fold, even though I feel like some fans just forgot about him last year because he was out of sight, out of mind. Enter uh, six-round pick Jalen Speedy Naylor coming out of Michigan State, uh, the only good uh, Viking to wear number eight at Michigan State. Yeah, yeah. So Jalen Naylor, uh, he he's the guy that uh, – ke- um, Keenan McCardle was pounding the table on late in the draft. It's like, hey, we need to get Speedy Nailer. Hey, we've eschewed, eschewed. I don't know if I used that word right. Uh, wide receivers, playmakers, even though this is a very deep wide receiver draft because I believe in the guys that we have here. But uh, let's just get a little uh, Amazon add-on you know, right there. So Jalen Naylor, I think he does have a chance to potentially win the punt return job, especially with ISM dinged up. I think he has a chance to potentially down the line be quite a contributor because his time in Michigan State – sort of dinged up by injuries that's you know, that's a running theme at this point here but uh, he is shifty he is a playmaker uh, he does ha- come in with a chip on his shoulder and i think that he has a chance to be uh, something really special down the line here with the vikings uh second um a second column nailed it diamond dan Jacena. him of the 3.2 40 speed yeah i said it 
I said it. So he's got speed for days. He's also got size as well. Uh, he's turned himself into a very decent punt gunner. But uh, w- can he you know, spread his wings and become a wide receiver? Because remember last year, or was it two years ago, they actually changed him to safety for like a day. And then he played safety for a day. And then they're like, no. And then they move him back to wide receiver. Uh, I think that anything you get from Chisena on offense is just a bonus, but I think what he can still be is great as a punt gunner, great on kickoff uh, coverage as well. As long as he maintains a lane discipline and doesn't uh, outrun his his kicks, I think that he is very solid in what he does. Blake Pro is a wild card here. So I, I like Blake Pearl last year coming out of East Carolina. I think that he is a very solid route runner. I think he's got good hands. I think that he does have a little bit underrated shiftiness. There you go. Also, the voice of an angel. Woo! That's right, man. Uh, but towards ACL in camp last year, uh, sort of out of sight, out of mind, very akin to BC Johnson. But now he's coming in. Uh, Adam Thielen's basically adopted him as his little brother. Actually, he's like the little brother for the entire wide receiver room, and he's making some plays. Uh, he is looking good out there. I think that Blake Pro potentially could be a preseason stud and might be hard to cut. But then again, where do you put him? Practice squad, potentially? Sure. Tristan Jackson is a very interesting one. So he's a 2020 UDFA coming out of Syracuse. The Cuse. That's right, babe. Just like Marvin Harrison. And he's a very solid route runner. He's got good hands. Uh, I, I think that he sort of got buried in the mix in 2020 because uh, of the pandemic. Uh, no preseason. Guys didn't really get the time of day. But he spent the bulk of those uh, bulk of two seasons, two training camps with the Rams, with dun, 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 Kevin O'Connell as well as Wes Phillips. So Jackson... Jackson could be a dark horse in this competition because at at OTAs, when KJ was dinged up and ISM was out as well, Tristan Jackson was actually getting some run with the ones. Now, that could just be an anomaly. That could just be like, hey, Tristan Jackson was standing in the right place at the right time. But it's something that's worth monitoring, uh, especially as minicamp goes on this week as well as uh, training camp uh, is coming up uh, in a couple weeks. I think Tristan Jackson may make a push, man. Uh, Myron Mitchell, uh, former UDFA, uh, I think that he... You know, potentially could do something on the bottom of the roster, although he hasn't really gotten the time of day with even the twos or the threes. We'll see. Uh, Thomas Hennigan, a UDFA out of Appalachian State, uh, really interesting. Had a nice career for the Mountaineers. Maybe, maybe makes a practice squad. We'll see. And then also, you got Burt Wilson. Hey, Bertie. That's right. So, veteran, formerly of the Chiefs, formerly of the Dolphins. I think that he could potentially make the roster as the wide receiver five or maybe six because maybe they do carry six wide receivers on the roster this year also and don't sleep on a special teams prowess as well Uh, he's been typically a wide receiver you know four or five throughout his career and there's nothing wrong with that i think that burt does have a chance to make this team and and eventually make uh you know make a push to be a contributor in the passing game Uh, but that's it let's take a look at the vikings wide receiver room uh, let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo. But until next time, Skull Production Value.